Awesome. Wonderful. Welcome to the Doma Search Leadership Podcast. Uh, Doma Search are an executive search business working with uh, leaders in biotech, pharmaceuticals, medical device technology across Europe. We work with international organizations and we also run the Doma Search Leadership Podcast, which brings us here today, where we speak with leaders around the industry who are shaping digital and healthcare innovation within biotech, pharma and life sciences. And uh, yeah, absolutely delighted to be joined today uh, by Thomas Karganiko, who is a Hi. well multifaceted individual and leader. He's the Marketing and Communications Director and Senior Associate uh, senior associate partner at PQE Group, who are a quality consulting group working with pharma, biotech and medical devices, amongst many others. Been there for about six years. Also the co-founder, hobby, but uh, interesting startup story with Resilia Service, which is a digital platform, a mobile application, which is working with uh, private, uh, personal and healthcare providers in Italy at the moment, which I'm sure will grow. And you're also on the board of directors with ISPE, which is the International Society of Pharmaceutical Engineering. You're the marketing and communications chair as well, leading growth for the Italian affiliates. Um, really fascinating career, really delighted Thanks. to be joined by you. Uh, welcome, Thomas. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Matt. It's a pleasure being here with you. And thank you for having me. My pleasure. And you're in Boston at the moment, traveling internationally. Yeah um due to return to italy tonight tomorrow yeah so. ex excited about it yeah i've been uh, in the as i mentioned to you i've been in the us for a couple you know at least uh, four to five weeks now so it's been nice to be back but it's been a busy month for pqa so all, ex all exciting things ahead absolutely so you've been following the the conference and and uh, events schedule yeah. as well with Yes, like, like the last quarter of the year is very busy for us uh, as we have all major conferences happening, uh, both for ISP, PDA and many others, you know, biotech conferences that are happening here in Boston. So I, of course, uh, we promote our PQA group in this, uh, in this major events in the US uh, and uh, I'm part of the marketing team, but also support the business development to, you know, make sure that we create our network here. So it's been quite busy, but it's been really cool. Oh, wonderful. And perhaps would you be able to give me a, a, a brief intro for the audience for PQE Group oh. as well, main focus, uh, and then we could go into Resilia Service or, or ISP, whichever you feel. Absolutely. So I'll just uh, give you like a very quick let's say, overview of what PQE Group is. Uh, so basically, since 1998, we have been supporting uh, pharmaceutical and medical device and biotech clients uh, in achieving compliance and quality standards, you know, uh, across the world. So we work from uh, Australia, across Asia, Europe, and the US and Latin America. So we expanded globally in the last uh, 10 years, mostly. And uh, of course, originally we're from Italy. Uh, the the start actually PQ Group was a very small startup. You know, that was uh, opened in Florence by only five consultants working back in the nineties. You know, supporting the industry with the new with the very new GAMP guidelines at the time. So we expanded quickly, and this is a very evolving market. As I say always, it's a very niche market because what we do is very strictly related to guidelines. Uh, uh, for example, in the computer system validation uh, or, you know, or the support to our clients for achieving compliance before inspections, you know, uh, before FDA, IFA inspections or EMA inspections. So we support them to make sure that they deliver safely the products to the market. So even if it doesn't sound, we also have a very much uh, ethical, you know, uh, mindset. We are very, our mindset is very ethical because what we do is very much related to the well-being of the patients at the very end, as the more quality it is, uh, the more quality we give to our clients uh, the best they can produce their products uh, and of course uh, ultimate uh, target for everyone is patient safety so that's that kind of what we do and uh, the environment we work in and i noticed a couple of things just while we're on pqe group as well i noticed your post earlier on about sustainability yeah. uh, related yeah. to carbon footprint and also augmented reality as well for your your colleagues to to run projects uh, in, in yeah. a virtual setting as well that's really it. can you tell us anything about that yeah, absolutely. Let's say that this, of course, uh, we have evolved, uh, let's say we have always been working remotely. So as a consultant, uh, traveling, uh, of course, we've always been traveling a lot, but also working remotely. Most of the things that we do can be done remotely, especially, for example, all the service related to products, registrations, you know, dossier, 
uh, ready dossier preparation. So most of the things were already remote before you know the pandemic hit in 2020. But when that happened, we also found ourselves uh, how can we make sure that we keep uh, uh, how can we make sure that the business continuity is going on, uh, that the, the business is going, and we can still support our clients. So we developed a couple of uh, technologies in house. Was one was uh, related to a specific uh, software that we use uh, within the smart glasses. So basically we can provide audits remotely. So what we do is uh, we send uh, to our auditor on site these glasses that he can wear when he does the inspection. And there's also like a senior consultant in Europe or somewhere else in the world that can support these inspections to, to make sure that everything is checked and everything's correct. And so that's something that we did uh, a lot during COVID. Actually our first audit uh, that we successfully completed with smart glasses was an audit that we did in Japan through our office in Florence. And then we also developed um, what we call the V-Box, which is uh, a small device that we send to our clients uh, that basically creates uh, a very safe environment. Once they plug it into the laptop, we can access their system and their network uh, in total safety because it creates like a, a small intranet. So basically there's, everything is cyber secure. Uh, there's no uh, outdoor accesses uh, and we can actually you know, run testing uh, remotely for them. So. This is what we do, and uh, that's how we cope uh, for COVID in the you know in the 2020. And actually, you know, clients really liked the solutions because uh, at the end of the day, it was a waste. Is of course was saving money for them on our travels, uh, keep the service going, uh, and it's also way more sustainable as we cannot uh, we don't produce products, so there's not much that we can do to also help uh, the environment uh, in our own way. So yeah. if we can do it by reducing some travels, uh, making sure that we provide to our clients also options where, you know, are more sustainable, that's what we like to do most of the time. Yeah, absolutely. I know cyber has been a huge topic, especially across yeah. Europe at the moment. There's been several attacks I've, I've read about that uh, within health, yeah. which has been quite worrying. Yeah, it's quite worrying. I think uh, this is uh, cybersecurity is what everyone is talking about right now. Not sure if it's actually really happening uh, most of the time. We we try to help our clients to make sure that network is secure. That we have a very strong cybersecurity unit uh, in PQE, and uh, there were major attacks that just last year as well in Italy to our governments or you know to the healthcare system. So people are now seeing uh, you know the value in it. What I think. Uh, will be beneficial very soon uh, with the, some guidelines from FDA or other authorities to make sure that also cybersecurity is uh, something that they are going to be looking for in their inspections. Uh, so yeah. I hope that uh, more guidelines uh, and more, uh, let's say, rules uh, will come up also in that sector to make sure to, you know, to keep uh, I mean, the company safe. Certainly from a recruiting perspective, it, we're starting to see the, the CISO role, the chief uh, security. Yeah, security uh, office, uh, yeah. Well, is information security is, is, is very uh, a valuable piece of the equipment. And just before we move on from PQE Group as well, what is it about companies that, that mean that they, they can't do what PQE are brought in to do as well? So obviously you're very specialist in the work that yeah. you do and the consultants are very specialist, but why, why are organizations not... Or, or why can they not uh, develop the quality systems that that a company like PQE Group can can provide? So basically, that really depends because uh, depends on what kind of products are the companies have in the pipeline to release. So most of the time, uh, it really depends where they're going to sell their products. So for example, if we work for a customer in Europe that wants to approach uh, the US market. They really need our support to make sure that the production, the manufacturing process are compliant with the US market because uh, you get inspection based on where you want to sell your products at the end. So even if you manufacture, for example, your product in Germany or in Europe, uh, then uh, FDA from the US will come to inspect uh, your facility before giving you, you know, the, the green light to release a product. So most of the time, uh, clients that have not done that before and they really need support in making sure that these guidelines are respected, that they need consultants for these reasons. Or for example, we also worked on, uh, as we are IT guys at the end of the day, so let's say of course IT and the IT system are a big part of what we do. Most of the time companies need to constantly up upgrade their system from SAP to ERP to any others. So whenever there's a new software implementation that they need to deploy worldwide, that's uh, some for also other projects that we did for our clients is, for example, to deploy a new SAP system in every location they had around the world. In that case, they need us as staff augmentation to make sure the project is running because they don't have the you know, staff and the capability to also run these extra projects among the many other things they're looking for. 
So you can deploy your global teams wherever you need. Uh, right, exactly. Yeah. So the, our main strength, I will say, is that what makes us really different from other competitors that are there is that we really hire local consultants everywhere in the world. So we do that for, of course, there's always a business reason. So, so because we like to have a company that's very diverse, that also embraces other cultures, but also because at the end of the day, manufacturing sites, for example, in uh, Latin America, there will be a local staff there and they don't, and they want uh, consultants, they speak the language, they have the same cultural approach. So we're being really careful to make sure that we think globally, but really act locally as well within our, with our network. I remember working with a German company who had a manufacturing site in Tijuana as well. Right. It's quite interesting. And, and uh, that piece of recruitment is very interesting as well. Yeah, the, it's, the really, like, it's really like that because uh, they really want to, we kind of, we can really provide people in every language, in everywhere in the world. And that's actually what uh, our clients are looking for, you know, and then uh, we can localize activities. Of course, uh, it's been a very big investment because we are private owned uh, company. We're not public. Uh, so having uh, them, we used all our investment throughout the years to open new offices, new subsidiaries and hire new people, which has been actually a very lucky strike for us during the pandemic because uh, companies that didn't have local entities, you know, in other countries that couldn't do any more business while we were there. So, you know, it was not a problem at all. So I think also the time zone, uh, always COVID has been a big hit for us. So. Yeah. And that's nice to hear as well, that you've been out there for some time. It hasn't just been a, a whistle stop tour, you know, there for a couple of days and back, you've really invested some time out in the US. Yeah, yeah uh, a lot, <laughs> quite a lot. Like a, is that an annual pilgrimage for you or is it? Is yeah. it <laughs> so I'll tell you that right now, at least the half of my time I'm in the US as it is our leading subsidiary of the group and is where we are, you know, having uh, the bigger project. So it's the number one, I can say, P3 yeah. subsidiary right now. So having uh, our efforts here is definitely a big deal, you know, so most of people like executive and senior managers from the company travel a lot here. I also have some, do some uh, small travels across Europe as well. And I can't wait to be back actually in Asia as soon as uh, we were able to travel again because that's where I used to go a lot too. So it's pretty much uh, it's pretty much always on the run. Now. Yeah, all time zones. No, that's fantastic. Yeah. And and you've been heavily involved over the last almost six years as well with PQE Group as well. And and in the early days specifically with acquiring talent in global uh, in yeah. a global setting as well. How has that changed over the years as well, Thomas? In your experience and. Uh, yeah, so the fact that uh, when I started PQE, I was also part of the talent acquisition team has been really giving me a huge uh, help in what we do actually in marketing. As we don't have products, of course, uh, we're consulting, so all our business is based on people. So having that kind of HR skill set really helped me out also from the marketing perspective that I really enjoyed. And uh, things have changed a lot. It doesn't seem far away because it's been only five, six years that I did that kind of work. But then right now, things are very different. I feel that today is really difficult to, you know, retain, ta acquire talent and retain talent. So these are like, uh, there's a very, there's a lot of challenges out there because uh, we are lucky enough that in our niche of market, there's a huge amount of jobs out there. So basically we're competing and there's not many talents working in the same field. So it's a very rich, uh, of course, Parma is a very rich world, but at the same time, there's not many people working in it as we think. So. It's hard to find the people. Let's say all the companies are kind of, you know, fighting among, <laughs> try to try to try to get someone that is always a small batch of people, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're finding talented people that really are flexible and want to do this kind of job is not easy because consultants work hard, travel a lot, so it's also another thing to keep in mind. And also uh, needs of the people have changed. You know, millennials, Gen Z are completely different than what we think. So also getting a, an understanding of what they want and what they're looking for. This wasn't easy at all, I think. And I imagine your expertise in marketing and communications, it, it, and it's one of the things, maybe a misconception about the recruitment industry and, and talent acquisition is that we are very much selling dreams to, uh, yeah. to people and, and how we package that information and communicate the information is very important to it enable is, us is. to tap into the, the desires, you know, and the people, that, the reasons people want to get get out of bed on a morning as well. Uh, have you found your skills uh, have, have really helped in, in helping PQE group grow in communication? So that was, a, let's say that 
at the same time, uh, we look for new clients, but we also look for new talents because the more talents we have, the more projects we can do. So it's one thing that cannot go without the other. So yeah. having uh, I, what we did also from an employee branding perspective is that I applied the same kind of rules uh, that we apply into marketing is in, uh, let's say, in the talent acquisition and the communication of the company from our, an employer perspective than uh, from a service provider. And that I think really helps a lot to gain some exposure in major markets that we are recruiting a, a huge amount of people. Like uh, in Italy, just to, just to give an example, we have at least uh, 30 people every month joining our Italian offices uh, and then uh, the same amount uh, almost every subsidiary. So we grow by hundreds uh, every, every month. And um, it's not easy to make sure that we find these people, but uh, we try our best to promote uh, you know, our brand out there. And what really is key that I found uh, to my experience in PQ at least, uh, yes. is making sure that we communicate a lot of values, uh, you know, the diversity that we have, uh, what really makes us different, that is actually our diversity, the fact that we are so culturally driven and that we are very aware of all the differences, that is uh, a very safe workplace with no discrimination where people can work in. Uh, when we started marketing what we thought you know was a different way of doing things that uh, people really reacted really well and i also can see that uh, younger generations are very involved in uh, you know whatever is uh, related to sustainability and responsibility of a company so all the every time uh, i think a younger generation are really more i say sensitive they're really more sensitive to the environmental issues to companies that do something for the world as well so they're really looking for a company with yes, a purpose well. Uh, yeah. Topics. yeah. So the CSR is a big topic, and I see like younger generation are way more engaged in that now. Really, that's what they're looking for. Yeah. And I mean, we're not old, really, but uh, you know, there is a whole generation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That... I feel. Yeah, exactly. I say that uh, I see that they're coming from a very early ages. Like you know, people getting out of college now that are in the twenties really have uh, this feeling that they want to work with a company that has a purpose, that it has also a bigger purpose. And so I've seen this a lot as a trend. Uh, and uh, thankfully, we were already there, you know, in our culture, our mindset was already there. We was not, when I started PQE, I saw that this was really present in the company. We did so many charity and projects all over the world, but we, they were not really promoted or communicated, not because you want to promote it for a specific reason, but making sure people know, so they know what kind of environment they're going to be working in. I think uh, that would be very important. Absolutely. I had a conversation with my managing director not too long ago, and he mentioned a, a conversation he had with a with a business consultant that we had in our company. And the business consultant said, if, if you left the room after this training and asked everybody what our mission is, will they be able to you know, say it with a sentence? And we it kind of scratched his head and thought, well, I, I just I need to double check on that one. Uh, <laughs> That's not I, easy. That's not yeah. easy to communicate that. Yeah, it's quite hard, isn't it? But but I think if everybody is aligned to the mission as well, that's yeah. um, another great topic. Thankfully, yeah, that's a really hard to get people aligned with the mission. That's why having like a strong internal communication within the company is essential today because uh, people want to feel part of it. People want to you know take part in the company. They want to see that they're doing something for you know a bigger scope at the end. Yeah. And uh, that's why, thankfully, our senior leadership and, uh, and the CEO, uh, the, we are women on the consulting company. So our CEO, Gita Dincerto, has been really great in uh, also transmitting these values to our, our employees as well. And our senior leadership has been really involved into internal projects a lot. And uh, within the, our, our employers, we do a lot of um, trainings. Uh, we also have an internal PQ Academy to develop our talents as well. So I think all these efforts were a big investment for us uh, for time and money, but it's been really paid off because uh, at the end of the day, you want people to stay. As every time uh, you lose people is a, is a problem for the business. So Absolutely. There's, uh, there's the cost, there's the reputation. There's, yeah. there's so many things I was looking at. I was looking at all the factors that, uh, you know, not just the person leaving and the cost that it's taken to upskill them to a place, but all the other, all the other associated knock-on effects on team yeah. morale, momentum, you know, business acquisition. It's a really interesting topic. Um, and, and there's so many factors in it. There's oh, so many. It's crazy. <laughs> I was speaking to a, a CEO in Switzerland yesterday, and um, I, I won't go into too much, but it, it was it, something he said was very important. You know, very at the very early stage of their business, it was very important for them to identify exactly what kind of business they are. Right. And ten years down the, you know, the, the what is the what is the story? What is the package? What is the offer that, that we can provide to people right now in, in these right. stages? 
you know, almost thinking as if they were 10 year old, um, you know, getting them excited about the future, not just yeah. about kind of high paced startup. Yeah, definitely. And we are uh, within BQ Group, we are a very dynamic company. So the good thing about us that we're always running, let's say there's always something urgent, something is always running also because uh, the pharmaceutical market has been such a, you know, a huge uh, and dynamic sector recently. Yes. And at the same time, uh, uh, what we do now within our employees is to make sure they have a clear, you know, career path in front of them. So making sure that it's not uh, as a fixed, so we don't like to say, okay, after two years, you get this, after three years, you get that. So it's not like a, a set in stone uh, data that you have to wait until like before you get to a specific managerial position, some companies, uh, you have to wait to, like by policy five, six years, whatever. Everything is based on, uh, let's say, on uh, meritocracy. So basically, if you're good and you have to perform well, really well after two years, then you're going to you know jump into a new level in your career. So. We've been really flexible in that, but at the same time, we try to give some paths that our, you know, our people can really follow and they can choose also what they prefer to do. You know, we have a lot of people that are traveling, but a lot of people are also working remotely only. So there's a really, let's say, you can really find a work-life balance depending on what you like to do in your life. So I think that's a, a really good added benefit. Then. And I imagine over time that will really, uh, you'll really be able to see the, uh, the, the impact that has on retention as well of, of yeah. people. What about yeah. on the front end as well? What have been some of the big challenges? So you know how we, we know we discussed how competitive the industry is as well. Yeah. What are the, some of the things you know? Without giving away too many of your trade secrets, um, how do you make sure PQE get ahead of the crowd? Is it speed? Is it uh, innovation? So so let's say that we always uh, make sure that we are on the top of the innovation. So innovation is a big thing for us. So we always try to think to do things in a different way, innovative way. And then I have to say that our biggest force, our biggest strength is that we are problem solvers and very fast. So um, the fact that sometimes our clients are stuck in a specific projects, they don't know how to get away with it. The way we do the project management, the problem solving is very creative. So I think that's a little bit of our Italian heritage, you know, making <laughs> helping us to do that. And uh, that really is uh, what our clients are really liked because uh, we're really good in finding solutions uh, in, uh, you know, helping them. And the solutions are sustainable. They're not uh, crazy expensive solution because of course you can do everything with an unlimited budget, but also sometimes you also have budget constraints. So I think being flexible, innovative and fast in decision, uh, it's really what makes us, uh, uh, a good player in the market out there. And also the fact that we are privately owned is a big difference because uh, decision making is very short. So uh, decisions happen fast, uh, things happen fast because uh, the line of decision is really up to one, two, three people the most. So when you have that kind of flexibility in a company that nowadays counts around the 2000 people of the world, uh, you really can speed up process it really, really fast. So the fact that we're private and there's a very few people deciding uh, and the associates, the associates and the partners work together really hard. That really makes a big difference at the end of the day, I think. Brilliant. Wonderful. And can you tell me a bit about more, more about Resilia Service now and, sure. and your, your hobby and to. actual business, which is really exciting. And Yeah, it is actually, you know, it's an exciting business. And uh, this also was born in 2021. January 2021 is there where uh, I co-founded the company with the, partner, with the main partner of the company that is now the CEO. So... Uh, let's say Residia service uh, still works in the healthcare environment, uh, let's say, but not for the pharmaceutical, but more for end users. So during uh, COVID, the idea came to our mind because uh, it was really hard to find services during COVID, you know? Let's say Italy is not ready, it's not like fully digital in specific service yet. So we were like, how can you make sure that people can get the same uh, services, uh, can, can get doctors, can get support for what they need? Especially, you know, the idea, of course, came to COVID because that's when uh, during COVID uh, it was impossible to find the nurses. Uh, so many therapists were left behind because there was uh, no staff that could uh, actually help uh, people that were not suffering from COVID, but from all many other, you know, therapies that they were pursuing. So this came to my mind. Uh, and then we were like, why don't we just try to find a digital platform where people can uh, book a service that can be delivered in their house uh, or digitally via, let's say, a Zoom call or whatever. So let's say that we kind of uh, 
had the idea, it took us about almost a year to actually develop the app as we just did it, uh, as, a, as I mentioned to you at the beginning, as a hobby in our free time. And then we did the official launch. Actually, the app had the over 20,000 downloads in less than two weeks when we first launched it. So actually, it was really cool. And now we have expanded a lot in Rome and Milan in Italy. So people have been using it. We have uh, doctors, physicians, uh, and uh, physiotherapists, people that are in services and nurses that can come to your house and they can you know, take tests. Uh, also, during COVID, they could do a lot of tests, the rapid tests for COVID. So, there's been a, there's a, there's been quite a lot of buzz around it as well in the news. So we we're really excited about that because we got great coverage in Italy. And our next uh, step will be to expand that to the UK. So hope to see that you will see it there as well soon. Yeah, absolutely. And and the UK, although maybe digitally forward, is always innovating. And, and I'm always seeing uh, new players in the market. Yeah. With, with a different angle, uh, using because Italy is quite. You, you can't have Italian experience in the UK. You, you might have Italians in the UK, but you right. created a business there in Italy for Italy as well, which is which is unique in itself. Yeah, it's been a really it's been really unique as there were no apps on the market that were basically doing that. So there were yeah. no mobile apps. We really had very few competition out there. Some of them they were like vertical, only on one sector, like only nurses, or for example, only providing dentist appointments. Yeah. So it was more, uh, let's say, crafted around a specific sector. So the fact that we kind of opened it up to the whole healthcare industry was really the big difference because we're now partnering with the, you know, category associations within Italy, and then for universities where most of the people getting out of college that want to work in the healthcare system, they can have their own freelancing business and be in the app and work on their own. So actually I've seen that a lot of uh, uh, new graduates from this kind of uh, colleges really prefer to work on their own and go private. So this is also a tool where people, you know, I just got out of college and need some new clients and just everything using by app. So even being a provider on the app, uh, can be a really good advantage uh, for those who don't want to work like on a fixed uh, term job, I don't know, in a hospital or in a specific uh, facility. Wonderful. So uh, so in terms of um, uh, publicity for Resilient Service as well, who are the sort of clients now of, of the app? Is it you and I? Is it the consumer? Um, yeah, of course, all consumers. Yeah. 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 Uh, healthcare oh. providers, general practitioners. Yeah, there's a lot of general practitioners, a lot of nurses and healthcare providers. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, how can I call it, let's say, brands uh, that in Italy already have their own facility, for example. So we partner with big brands in Italy that have their own facility where they are private uh, clinics, basically, where yeah. they do a lot of tests and they have different uh, specialists in house, uh, but they didn't have a booking system. So mm -hmm. So the fact that, that they could, uh, what we did, we developed a multi-account after a while because uh, we got in touch with these uh, clinics and they were like, oh, I think we, we think that the idea is great, but we have multiple locations all over Italy. So can we maybe jump on our corporate contact uh, and try to put all our, you know, all our branches in the app so we can get books, bookings directly from there. So that's actually another development of the app that we did right after it was out, after I think six months, uh, we also developed the multi account so making sure that we also got you know bigger you know uh, companies out there that are already they already have a market and they're already working on it but they needed more how you say let's say digitalization the booking system and so on so that was an extra that was an extra thing that came out of our mind that's really interesting so uh, will you be looking at targeting the, the same market in the uk as well or you uh, we haven't to say we haven't thought about it yet, but yes, yeah. uh, we will go with the, the same kind of market out there as well. So more like uh, to already established, uh, you know, facilities that already provide service. Uh, they maybe don't have a booking system, and they want to kind of uh, call, let's say integrate uh, all their, uh, you know, all their stores, uh, all their you know points at once. So that's uh, what we're going to try to do in the UK, maybe. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, and uh, and ISP as well. But really keen to talk to you about that because you've been. You played a big part in in the, the brand really as well and yeah. own it overseas so how far does it sort of stretch from Italy uh, obviously you're running events as well is is it all based on uh, generating um, activity around Italy or is it global how does it work and keep so, 
So yeah, sure. So ISP for us is a very important association. Is one, uh, let's say, of the associations that where we work the most as a company with PQE Group. So, right. so basically, what my role can right now is uh, every, let's say, every country in Europe has a chapter, yeah. and the, the chapter is managed by a board of directors that are all volunteering basically to run events and conferences within their country. So right now. I'm uh, the chair for marketing and communication in Italy. So what I do, I support the local affiliate to promote the events that we do. We actually have an event next week about sustainability. So we try to always provide technical content. So ISP is more about training and uh, you know inviting people from the industry, from the end users, a big pharma company to get trained on the latest guidance, uh, on the latest trends and regulatory you know affairs that are happening right now in the world. So they use it as a educational scope mainly yeah. and uh, so let's say that i'm supporting italy to promote themselves to get new members within the associations uh, to get sponsors and then of course to promote the events that we do on that side on the other side in the us as i'm also part of the planning committee for the biggest uh, annual event that is going to be in orlando at the end of october what i'm doing is basically supporting the conference um, programs in a reviewing all the abstracts and submissions making sure that all the agenda is up to date uh, uh, me and the other emerging leaders of the industry are part of the planning committee this year so it's been a great opportunity for us uh, you know to join uh, and we're working you know hand in hand with senior experts of the uh, of the industry and it's been great so far wonderful it really yeah. feels uh thomas in your you know still early career i'd say you know or, or middle of your career depending on how you you want to do I see it. yeah it really feels like at the moment that you're in a really good place in terms of ISPE, Resilient Service, PQE Group as well. Was it always that? Does it, you know, was it always uh, so straightforward? It, it, it appears. Uh, and when you look back, is there something you would have done differently, maybe uh, in your early career? Just thinking about you personally now. Right. So thinking about it personally, I will say that uh, it's been uh, definitely not easy all the time. So I get to this point after a long time, you know, trialing and error and failure. So actually, that's actually a good thing. But uh, what I'm very happy is that I have no regrets in what I did. So I really I would never I would not have done something different so far. So all the choices I made uh, so far, I'm happy with them. So that was good. And then, uh, but yes, it wasn't easy. Actually, when I, right after college, I moved uh, to the US, so my very first intern. So I moved to Brooklyn for a while and started working out there. And it was really hard because it was a new thing for me. So it was really hard to get understanding uh, of uh, what I should do and what my career was going to look like. So it took me a while to figure that out. And uh, for the four or five years I spent out of Italy before joining PQE, there's been uh, a lot of trials and errors for me that I were really, really, you know, important uh, for my personal development. So I would say that definitely has been not as, straight, as straightforward as it seems. And, uh, but uh, I think I got to this point because uh, I did a lot of uh, errors too. So that's really the big difference, I think. Uh, and I will, I will do them again for sure. <laughs> yeah, it seems we learn a lot yeah. from failures, isn't it, through life? And uh, yeah, some great lessons learned. Well, it's been really definitely. fascinating speaking with you, Thomas, and and, uh, and learning more about what you're involved in as well. It's, um, it's it's really good to see as well how you're involved in the associations as well. You've been given the freedom as well to to set up your own technology platform, which is really interesting. And and I'm sure this all adds to the um, to the gravitas that, that you have within the industry as well. Uh, you know, having having hands in many yeah. parts. As we say in the UK, <laughs> yeah, definitely. As uh, the thing that I like the most about what I'm doing right now is, as you said, that I'm very, let's say, diverse in all my activities. So really, I'm uh, looking after associations and you know, and they're managing also a big team. Actually, my team is about 20 people right now in PQE, so it's also a big team to manage uh, uh, on a on a daily basis and traveling. So I think well, that the fact that keeps me so busy, it's really what I like the most. And so. The fact that uh, I'm a guy that really gets bored easily. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> the more you make me do, the more I'm happy. So I think uh, <laughs> I found I really found my spot in PQE. Oh, fantastic. And I thought a lot of people ask me as well, how do you manage your time with a lot of things going on? The podcast, work, business, family, book, all this kind yeah. of stuff. What are your top tips, Thomas? And, and how do you oh. manage your set? So I'm very uh, military style. Yeah. And I know exactly what I'm doing the day before and I, I run it like an operation. Yeah, exactly. I'm kind of like you, I would say. So 
I have to be like this, uh, so <laughs> otherwise I would not keep uh, I will not keep go things going or uh, get things done in general. Yeah. I'm very you know strict with my schedule, so I think it's important that you plan ahead everything. So just so right now I already planned ahead from here to December of what I'm doing basically every month in terms of travels, uh, dates, and days at the office, days in other offices that I'm going sometimes in Italy. So. Planning ahead, it's really the big, uh, the big thing. So also taking time off to plan in advance uh, the schedule is really important. And uh, I'm very, uh, like the, the good thing that helps me out is that I work really much related to events. So the fact that I'm joining so many conferences and events that really kind of are my, you know, my targets and my deadlines. So that really helped me out. To, yeah, it helped me out to work my schedule around it. And then uh, I, one thing that I learned uh, now is to put time off of the calendar. So Whenever, as you know, it's not easy to have a work-life balance in what we do as we are always online. And marketing is one of those things that you work 24 hours. You can work any time of the day, really. So always on. Um, you're always on, but it's hard because sometimes you're always on. You never find time off as well. So yeah. I try to make sure that in some weekends, my laptop is always off no notification and you know time off on the calendar during the week after work so making sure that uh, you also put on the calendar personal time really helps i think uh, otherwise you forgot about it because there's always yeah. many things to do so i mean get that as a, a meeting is good for you even though like a meeting with yourself is it's nice. a meeting. yeah absolutely yeah. Well, it's a nice example to set as well for your team who will probably avoid burning out because you're right. setting a good example for you're giving giving yourself some some freedom to to relax. Yeah, totally, totally. I agree to that. Brilliant. And really quickly, just before we wrap up, Thomas, where can anybody see? Are you going to be in any events in Italy or Germany or you know European stuff? Yes, definitely. So I'm going to be on an event uh, next week in Milan about sustainability that I'm planning with the ISP Italian chapter, which is really cool. And I hope everyone uh, that is in Italy in Milan can join. And then I'll be again in the conference in Orlando for the ISP annual meeting October 30 for three days. So I'll be there in Orlando for actually a full week because we're also the PQ anniversary as well. November is our 24th anniversary. So we are also nice. sponsoring the golf tournament. We have a uh, golf, our team is going to come and play golf. We're going to have uh, like a gelato station at the golf course nice. sponsored by PQE. So a lot Brilliant. of things are happening, also fun things, which is nice. Well, I look forward to my invites. And, uh... Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> You're a golf player, right? That's right. Yeah. Former golf pro. Yeah. So uh, yeah, anytime you need a, a wingman. I need I need some teams because I started only this year, so I need some teams from you, I think. <laughs> well, we'll chat about that afterwards. <laughs> really. yes. Thomas, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. And I'm sure, I'm certain that people are going to enjoy this conversation. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you, Matt, for having me and have a great day. Speak thank soon. You. Cheers.